we reached the end of August, so now it's time to rank all the August 2024 releases that I saw from worst to best. Spoiler alert, this was kind of a dead month for movies, so the only one I give a positive review to is the one in the number one spot. The others on this list I thought were awful, or just kind of passable. So let's get started. And coming in at last place at number six, Harold and the Purple Crayon. How did this get greenlit? Seriously. Take a ten-page book with no conflict, age up the child main characters who is an adult, and give them existential crisis. Because existential crisis was what all great kids' movies need. And make the main character who is a child in a book written for the three to five year old crowd a forty something man child. So stupid. How is this the same director as Ice Age and Rio? I'm not gonna act like Ice Age and Rio were masterpieces or anything, but they were at least decent. There are so many problems with this movie. For one, when Harold enters the real world, which happens about five minutes in, so there's pretty much no build up to this, he's a live action human, but his friends the Moose and Porcupine are also live action humans, which doesn't make sense. And the Porcupine character is in the movie so little that I keep forgetting she was even a character. This feels like a movie that was written 20 years ago and is just now being made. It steals from movies like Elf and Enchanted, where the Manic Pixie Dream Boy or Dream Girl character enters an unfamiliar world has existential crisis, and wins the hearts of the skeptics and naysayers. Ironically, Zooey Deschanel is in this, and doesn't play a manic procedure girl character that she always does. It has all the 2000s kids movie cliches, and the humor is just not funny. There's a joke where a bunch of old men call Zooey Deschanel's phone number and start flirting with her, the villain is unhealthily obsessed with Zooey Deschanel, and he ends up being rewarded for his creepy behavior, and for a movie that keeps talking about the power and creativity of IMAGINATION. There is no creativity or imagination here. This is absolutely one of the worst kids movies I have ever seen. There is nothing of value here. I have seen better scripts written by a five-year-old in crayon. Number five, Sadie Bikini Bottom, the Sadie Cheeks movie. I haven't really watched any of these Spongebob in like 20 years, unless you count the Sponge on the Run movie from a few years ago so you can review it. I still like classic Spongebob, but it seems that ever since the first movie it's really gone downhill. One of my biggest complaints is why is this entire movie CGI? What happened to good old-fashioned 2D animation? In the second movie, the CGI parts made sense, because they went from Bikini Bottom to the surface, and that was to differentiate it. But in the third movie, and this one, it just seems odd. The CGI isn't even very good. It looks like graphics from a Nintendo GameCube game from early 2000s. The plot is boring and uninteresting. The live action doesn't blend well at all with the CGI, unlike the first movie. The villain's motivations are plain and stupid. I find it hypocritical the film is portraying wanting to merchandise the Spongebob characters and his evil plan, even though Nickelodeon has been doing the same thing for 25 years. In fact, this movie's very existence is an example of that. I can't remember any particularly funny jokes or moments, or anything quotable. The Sadie Cheeks movie is scraping the bikini bottom of the barrel. Number 4, The Union. Halle Berry, Mark Wahlberg, J.K. Simmons, with a cast like that, it seems like this would be a fun movie, but unfortunately, it's very dry and bland. It seems like there's a very specific audience for this film, men in their 40s and up, and I'm not part of that audience, so it was hard to relate to this movie. As far as the spy movie element goes, it's pretty forgettable and generic. Wahlberg and Barry don't have any chemistry and are not that entertaining to watch. Wahlberg's character is not that charming or likable. The humor in this movie feels very forced and awkward. Jake Simmons gets a few chuckles every once in a while, but that's really it. This is just a bland, forgettable background noise movie. It's not worth your time, even if you are a fan of these actors. Number three, Borderlands. There's a line in this movie from Jack Black's character. I calculate our chances of survival at zero percent. That never happens. That was my reaction to waking up the morning this came out and seeing that at the time, this movie had a zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes. As of making this video, it's gone up to 7%, which is still drastically bad. And to be honest, I can see why. I've never played the game, so my only exposure to this was the trailer. And I thought, this looks fun. I like the cast. I'll give this a shot. I like cheesy video game movies like Street Fighter or the 1995 Mortal Kombat. And what I got was not a complete disaster, but I wouldn't say the film was competently made. What it does well is the aesthetic of the planet, and the action is also pretty well done. Unfortunately, the film is marred by paper-thin characters, jokes that fall flat, and a plot that just isn't that interesting. How thin are these characters? If you thought the line in Suicide Squad of, 
This is Katana. She's got my back. This is the worst way to explain a character. That line looks well thought out by comparison to these characters. Literally, only two out of five characters of any sort of development or arc are Kate Blanchett and Ariana Greenblatt. The rest of the characters were just... there. Even then, Greenblatt, that you can tell she's having fun in this movie, has a very paper-thin character. She's essentially the story's MacGuffin, but you also really try hard to give her a tragic backstory, while also making her part of the team, and... I don't know, I don't think it worked. What's a huge, huge shame about this movie is this is a great cast. Kate Blanchett, Jack Black, and Kevin Hart are all great in other things, just not this movie. I haven't seen a Jack Black performance this unfunny since Shark Tale. Not a single line that came out of this character, who was supposed to be in the comic relief, was even remotely funny. And considering this is being marketed as being similar to Suicide Squad or Guardians of the Galaxy, which are movies about a bunch of misfits that hate each other, that come to love each other in the end, meanwhile spewing witty banter, there's no witty banter. The villain is also very paper thin and just lousy. What a disaster this movie is. Based on feedback from people who haven't played the game, they seem to really hate it. And I, who hasn't played the game, didn't find it all that entertaining either. It's the poor man's Suicide Squad. Number two, Afraid. Afraid? <laughs> I find it ironic that this is a movie about evil technology, and it's distributed by Sony. There are some good elements to this movie. John Cho is great as one of the main characters. The voice of the evil AI does a good job of switching from friendly to creepy to evil. But as far as the writing goes, it's pretty generic. It doesn't present any new ideas about AI, and it feels at times like they're taking inspiration from movies like Megan, Avengers Into Voltron, and the Disney Channel movie Smart House, and the show Black Mirror. Everything in this movie has already been done before, and done much better. It does present both sides of the argument. It shows the advantages of the way that AI can be used for good, but it also very heavily leads to the AI is bad message. The first two acts are decent, but the third act is where it starts to fall apart. <laughs> And there's a plot line about a cult that worships this AI that comes out of nowhere. <clears throat> and even some of the ideas with that, where the AI made people disappear, not resolved. And despite some of the horrible things this AI does, the end tries to make the audience sympathetic to the evil AI, and it just doesn't work. You saw the trailer and thought it looked interesting, rent it on discount, otherwise skip it. And number one, the only good movie that I saw in August, Trap. M. Night knows what's hot among white women right now. True crime, serial killer ducks, and Taylor Swift. Let's put all these ideas into a movie, you've got Trap. M. Night has said in the past he's been influenced by Alfred Hitchcock, going so far as to put himself in his movie's cameo like Hitchcock would. This definitely feels the most influenced by Hitchcock, as much like Psycho, we follow a serial killer and lurk into his psyche. Gus Hartnett is fantastic in the lead role as a serial killer, ranging from creepy to charming when he needs to, but the script is, for the most part, very smart. At times, it feels like the Hitman games, where the main character needs to get certain objects and great distractions to get away, and there's a scene where a character is figuring out that the main character is a serial killer, but instead of calling the cops, they instead go live on Instagram, and instead of telling their followers the location, they just, like, you know, things like that are a bit annoying. It's almost nepotism at its finest, as Shyamalan's daughter plays the Taylor Swift type character. She does a job, but I was interested to see what happened to her. This is one of Shyamalan's most thrilling and original movies, even if at times some of the plot doesn't make sense. It's worth seeing, and was the only movie worth seeing this month, so if you haven't seen it, go out and see it right now. Trap. And let me know what you thought of the August 24 movies, and I'll see you next time.